Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time I'm going to help you get the Sylvania LED bulb talking to our good friend the Hubitat C5 Hub. So we'll go ahead and get the process started and I'm going to switch over to the web interface because if I don't we're going to get blinded a little bit. So I'll shift over to the web interface and we'll get the bulb turned on. You can see it's flashing in the background so we're ready to rock and roll here. So we're basically where we're at at this point is we've gone into the Hubitat app and we've tapped on it says my new hub but it's actually the one for that I'm using here in the studio. So we'll tap on my new hub, we'll tap on devices and then we'll click on discover devices and then we've got to tell it Zigbee. Now this bulb is going to be a little different than some of the ones that you're used to. So let's get it discovered here. And then we can move on to the next step. Because this one caught me a little bit by surprise because the way it initially it got recognized but it didn't get recognized. Okay, there we go. It took a little bit. You can see it's flashing, so it's it's found it. Now you've seen the screen change. So now we will call this uh, Sylvania, and we will tap on Save. Now you see it says go to Save, so what we'll go back here and do now is go into the interface and tap on Devices, and you see there it is. So we should be ready to go, except now you see the problem. You notice there is only the, let's see, I don't know if we can, if my cursor is going to show up here. You only see configure and get info. Now there is, and I've got the latest firmware on the Hubitat, and I've talked to Hubitat support, and apparently the problem is they're not seeing a um, fingerprint, for lack of a better phrase. So what we'll go down here and do, see it finds, it's seeing the Zigbee ID, and the label we put in, actually, we need to go ahead and change that up there because the device name is not going to, work well and let's if I can type here and we'll tap Sylvania and we'll minimize the screen so here the problem is see it's saying for type device so therein lies the problem it's not saying a fingerprint in the Hubitat software or the hub rather that it's not able to identify what device it is so if we go down here and go to the generic Zigbee bulb and we'll tap save device and see now everything has changed now what I have run into is when you the first time to is getting used to the bulb it may act up a little bit in terms of it may not be showing the way it should so we'll tap off okay now you just saw it go off just out of off camera and on and we will go set level. Yeah, I know. Okay, we'll set the level, uh, we'll say 40%. And this is something you're going to have to experiment with on the bulbs to see how they respond. Now, so you see current states down at the bottom. So switch on, switch 40%. Now, what we'll want to do, if you want to take it back up to full, you'll just go in here and go to 100%. And then we can say set level. Okay, now you can see by the reflection that's over here that the bulb is up to full power. Now if we go off. So cycling it a few times seems to be the trick. It's the number one thing is it's not getting, it's not, the, the Hubitat is not seeing the fingerprint. And then it takes a time or two of cycling the bulb before it, the Hubbard Hub really sees that the active state is there, and, and you're, you're going to see why here in just a second. So now we can go into the dashboard, and we see Studio, and we will actually delete that device because we don't want that one there. And it will tap on, okay, see it says Sylvania, so that's good, so we'll just tap on Sylvania. And add dial. (coughs) 
Oh, and it's select template. Okay, well, that was my bad. So we'll say bulb. Now, add tile. So if we close this out, now, see, it's, it thinks it's on. So we'll tap it. Okay, now it's realizing it's actually off. And we'll turn it on. It comes up. Turn it off. This is where it gets a little finicky the first time or two. But trust me, for a $7 bulb, I think I can get used to being a little finicky. And then we drag the little slider here, and that will dim the bulb on the fly. And tap it again. And it, like I said, it's, I've seen this be a little glitchy the first few times, and then eventually it will start straightening out. Now, if we go out of the dashboard, and I'm wondering if that isn't the problem. Let's go over here to dashboard. I think it may be the web interface acting up. So now, well, no, the web interface is doing the same thing. So we've tapped it. It's on now, even though it already thought it was on. And let's turn it off. Tapped it. So then it, it actually turned it off. On. Off. So it's obviously is a little bit of a handshake issue, but I said there again for for seven dollars, it's uh, it's not a bad bulb to to consider using. And this is one that obviously it's going to take a little bit of tweaking to get it to to play nice. And there may be yet another firmware update. Let's go in here to uh, settings. We've got to go into the web interface. And we can see real quick if there is a firmware update. And we'll go over here, system messages. Actually, okay, let's go down here to, we'll go down to settings. That's where we need to be. And we'll go into, we don't need to set the login security. Let's we'll check for updates. Okay, no updates available at this point. So this is some of the, the quirks of smart home technology. Occasionally you'll see one that may act up a little bit. I've been running this for several days, and this is the first time I had seen it act up. It was a little uh, squirrely when I went to go reset it, and I had to do went through several different tech documents. So if you have a situation where the bulb isn't working or isn't responding correctly the sequence i found is you will turn it on for two seconds and off for five seconds and you repeat that process five times and when you turn the bulb back on you should see after about probably four or five seconds approximately that it should blink a couple of times so it could be i've, I've been resetting the bulb several times a day so maybe between the bulb and habitat it's just got a little bit of an attitude and let's face it what part of smart home technology hasn't copped an attitude so this is just the basis of get up running it's it's a very affordable bulb and i've been impressed with it so this is something that is worthwhile considering we'll be going through some of the other roles now that i've got the newer hubitat hardware and then we can take it from there to see what we can do with some of the different options i've got uh, all sorts of sensors and everything to actually use this as a uh, I won't call it a security system, but give you the option of monitoring things. So if you have a, a home that you vacation to or a cabin or whatever and that you vacation to on the weekends, or if you travel a lot and would like to take some of your smart home with you, that's one of the things we'll be doing with the Hubitat because that is, after all, one of the things that it would be worthwhile to have this be able to be used for. So that's one of the things just one of several things that we'll be looking at. So appreciate you for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Make sure you click on the subscribe button below the and then the notifications icon so that you get notified of all the new videos. If you want to keep up with what's going on, then you'll see a video here and or here with the next steps of other things we'll be doing with the Hubitat device and really for the most part it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean you're seeing this is the, the C5 the the next gen version of it and this is the little wall what they send with it. Now it does plug in with a USB connection so if you have multiple USB devices and you've got a powered hub that's certainly an option to consider 
powering it that way so you don't tie up with a bunch of, of wall warts. Anyway, we're just one of the options that are out there. I've got links in the show notes for all of the items discussed here. So if you want to get some on your own, haven't, if you use those links, I will get a small commission from Amazon on those. But the main thing is get what you feel is going to work best for you. Number one thing I'm finding is always check periodically. And usually when you go into the Hubbit interface, it will do a good job at telling you when there are firmware updates out there. I may not jump on them the first day, but certainly within a couple of days, just to keep everything up and running. And you will have to do updates periodically, especially for it to understand some of the newer Zigbee or Z-Wave devices, just to make sure it's got the information it needs to get them up and running. So thank you for your time. If you're not able to always watch the videos, I do have a podcast that's the audio track of the YouTube videos. If you go to techbyteswithronnutter.com and you can subscribe that way. I also have this available as a uh, flash briefing on Amazon Alexa. So just want to make this as easy for I can for you to get to the different content. So thank you much for your time and we'll see you again soon.